Good morning, Arpita. Thank you for joining in today's interview. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. And thank you for the opportunity to... Um, sorry. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, for this interview, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Arpita. So, Arpita, before we proceed, can you give a brief introduction about yourself? Yes. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to uh, giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. I'm Arpita Anjan. I'm a Mangalorean born and raised in Mumbai. I'm, uh, I have completed my MBA in uh, finance. And uh, after that, um, I got uh, selected in a campus interview and placed uh, for a MNC company. I worked there for almost two years and uh, it was for the finance domain. And then I uh, switched my career to the uh, career as a technical consultant and worked there for almost for three years, a uh, technical consultant in CRM. And um, currently working in uh, uh, Cognizant for almost four years. Um, two years worked for finance domain and then through the internal job posting, I got placed in uh, um, Dynamic 365 as a function, uh, functional consultant. For uh, one year, I from that two years, from um, that one year I worked as um, uh, worked for the support tickets um, wherein we used to use the Jira tools um, to track all the uh, tickets. And um, afterwards, uh, um, seeing the uh, progress and uh, the work which I used to do in the uh, support tickets, I got a project uh, for a project and I'm working in a project uh, uh, for this one year. And um, worked for a small firm, uh, did a project for the firm, uh, small firm. Um, we use uh, agile method. Um, wherein um, we do a sprint planning first of all and then after the sprint planning uh, we um, um, arrange a scrum call a scrum master and arranges a call wherein we discuss the blockers and then after the final discussions uh, we start with the project uh, uh, implement uh, projects and um, um, this is how it's going on as of now so you mentioned that we you discuss the blockers and then you move on to the development of the project Mm -hmm. So why the blockers are discussed before the start of the development means we, before the start, how can you understand that these are my blockers? Okay. Uh, so uh, in this, first of all, the requirement gathering is done. A fit gap analysis is uh, um, done, wherein uh, the user uh, shares his uh, requirement and a blueprint is shared by the user. So when the user shares the requirement and... Uh, uh, if in case uh, we feel that uh, there is some missing information or something, uh, we do discuss in that Scrum call. Those are the Scrum discussions, right? Yes. Um, for any kind of uh, requirement gap, if it is there, yes. we need to highlight that. Okay. Yes. So you mentioned that you have been a part of both support as well as implementation project, right? Yes. What do you enjoy the most? A support job or an implementation job? I enjoyed both. While coming to the support tickets, I learned a lot of things, uh, how to uh, handle the customers and how to uh, actually um, go in depth uh, with the modules, um, where and what fields are available in the support ticket, uh, in the tickets. Um, I learned a lot in detail in the support tickets. When it came to project, uh, it actually helped me because I have worked in the support tickets. It helped me in the project as well. So okay. both I have enjoyed. Which one is the most, uh, my question was, which which is the most that you enjoy? Okay. When it comes to project, I enjoyed uh, the most uh, doing with the project because uh, we have to, uh, it is a team bonding, we can say. So um, in that thing, I enjoyed the most because um, in the support tickets, uh, we do take help of our colleagues or we do uh, our own uh, uh, researches and, and all in the support tickets as well. However, in the project, uh, we are on our own. Uh, once we know what to do and um, we have to put our 100% and that's where the dedication comes into picture. So I think uh, that is the most uh, interesting part when it comes to project implementations. Suppose you are working in an implementation project okay, mm. and there are other team members as well who's working with you. Okay. Yes. So different members in the group means that different brain, brains will be functioning at the same time. Correct. They will have their own thought process, own logical analysis that they would be doing and presenting their own ideas for example if you're working in a team wherein there is a conflict of opinion that you have mm -hmm. that you face with your counterparts so yes. at that time how are you gonna handle such kind of situation 
uh, we can actually um, such situations have been uh, taken place while uh, I was doing a project for the small firm. Uh, there was a difference in our opinions. However, uh, we did do a scrum call. We discussed each and every points were discussed. My points were put into place. The other colleagues points were put into place. And then we came uh, to a conclusion that uh, this some of the points from my um, opinions can be taken into picture and some of the points from their opinion can be taken into picture which will be uh, beneficial for us as well as the user mm -hmm. okay so what is the most challenging scenario you have faced so far in dynamics 365 profile and how did you overcome that challenge okay mm. Okay, there was a part wherein um, the customizations, uh, wherein the user had a different uh, uh, expectations from us and we had a different uh, uh, opinion. However, uh, for the customizations, uh, we used, um, we do have a technical team. So we took the help of the technical team and uh, we uh, did the customization as per the user. However, we um, tried to make them understand uh, this is what uh, it can be done. Um, other than that, we are also, um, um, you know, um, we are also, um, we are also tied up. We uh, cannot do much more about it. However, this is what the customization is. And if we will do more, there will be uh, um, consequences. Hence, uh, the user also, uh, you know, agreed to that. Can you explain means uh, the uh, use case of it wherein this has happened? Means you're talking about consequences. What type of consequences or how did you pass on this information to the client and how did you ensure that the client accepts whatever thing that you are stating? Okay. Consequences are in cases wherein, um, for example, uh, if there is some module, uh, if there is a... Um, so any use case that you have, I don't need an example. Means you are okay. working in this domain, right? There have to be some situations that you might have faced in the industry wherein, wherein you had to pass on the information to the client that this is what it's going to impact this. We cannot proceed with this or might be you, if you take this uh, into consideration, it would be beneficial for the project. Any kind of, any such kind of scenarios you might have faced? Uh, yes, um, we have faced such scenarios wherein um, we made sure that, you know, um, if in case uh, this, um, if in case more modifications are the, done, there will be any issues in the future. Um, for example, um, I'm, not sure. I'm sorry, but... No problem, it's fine. You yes. can explore that later, I guess. So if I have to ask you, which are, are the modules that you are really good at? What would, we, what would you tell? Okay. When it comes to modules, I'm uh, good at uh, the accounts payable module. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, accounts payable module is uh, like uh, we have a, a few setups which needs to be done in the accounts payable module. Accounts payable uh, is a such thing wherein uh, we purchase some goods from the vendor and all the do all the details and doc um, payments till the payments from uh, purchasing um, the order till the uh, last step that is uh, making a payment. We have to post each and everything in the Dynamics 365. Each and everything. Can you be more specific in yes. terms of your technical skills? Yep. Sure. So uh, first, uh, when it comes to setup uh, in the accounts payable module, we do a payment setup. Then we create a group. Then we do a posting profiles and create a parameters. And then we create a vendor. So each and uh, all steps needs to be followed. And finally, uh, a transaction is uh, uh, done when. Uh, financial transaction takes place when a uh, invoice is posted and also uh, when a product uh, when a product receipt is generated and the second one is when the in um, when we create a invoice so this is how the accounts payable works okay and then how many ways you can do payments for vendors okay uh, payments are uh, vendor uh, there are a lot of um, um, things like we can do a payment by cash or payment by uh, there's are there are terms of payments like net 30 days net 10 days uh, so it depends um, when uh, how we uh, we want to do the payment to the vendor mm -hmm. okay so uh, suppose i have uh, suppose you are selected in my organization and currently i am not using d365 as my 
uh, software. I I and my business is already running very comfortably right now. So why do you think that? Why as a D three sixty five functional consultant you will ask me to upgrade to D three sixty five? What are the benefits of it? Okay, uh, Deep, can you please repeat the questions because uh, the yeah, video was I'm sure I, I can repeat myself. So my yes. question is that currently my business is running absolutely comfortably without any problem. Okay. Okay. But I ha I am in doubt that whether I should upgrade to D365 or I should go with the flow means already what is running well, I should stick to that. So, and I want your opinion, if you are selected, I want your opinion that should I keep the flow as it is or should I upgrade to D365? Being a D365 specialist, what will be your suggestions that why should you tell me to upgrade to D365 if my business is already running very comfortably. Hmm. Okay. So when it comes to D365, there are a lot of um, benefits. I will not say that, um, yes, your organization is running uh, smooth. However, uh, there might be some, um, uh, it has to be uh, kept in a books or there might be a mess up. When it comes to Dynamics 365, every module is uh, um, you know, differentiated separately. And it is in a, a way wherein uh, when you select such mod, uh, wherein you select or, you know, um, when you want, for example, when you want to go to a cash and uh, bank payment, uh, bank setup, you can do it via cash and bank um, uh, management. So there are various modules which are divided. It will be easy for you to go to each and every setup. When it comes to bank, it is cash and bank uh, management. When it comes to vendor setups and everything, we have um, we have accounts payable module. When it comes to sales order, we have accounts receivable. When it comes to general entries, we have ledgers. So we it is divided. It will be easy when you want to search for any records. It will be easy when you use a Dynamic 365. And to explain to a user, it will be really easy for you to explain it in much more detail. When it comes to humans, they um, understand it very well when we differentiate each and every part. Hence, when uh, you will show, when I will, as a functional consultant, I will show a Dynamics 365 to a user, uh, he will be able to differentiate. I can differentiate and uh, make the user understand. This is uh, where the journal entries can be posted, that is under ledger, and this is where the vendor accounts can be set, that is accounts payable, and this is where um, the sales order can be done, that is accounts receivable. So there are various uh, different, uh, differentiates, um, differentiate, we can differentiate and we can uh, show it to the user so that the user understands it very well. And um, next time when they do it on their own, it will be much more easier for them. Okay. Thank you, Pita. I'm done with the round. Pitoshi, you can take over and move for the Thank deck. you, Deep. Thank you for your time. Hello, Pita. How are you today? I'm good, Pritoshi. How about you? I'm good, thank you. So, um, okay, Arpita, can you please tell me quickly uh, how many modules you have worked as of now? Uh, mocked in the sense, I'm sorry. No, module. I mean, how many modules you have worked as of now? Okay, modules as of now, I have worked in accounts payable and um, I have worked in uh, ledgers. Uh, general ledgers, I have worked, cash and bank management a little bit. So I have worked almost in everything, but my specialization is in accounts payable. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, before I move to the uh, couple of questions, I just want to understand, you said you have worked in a project. Uh, yes. Can you please explain me uh, what was your role in the project and what exactly you have done in that project? Okay. Uh, in that project, I had to um, make the user understand uh, what uh, exactly the steps are and how it has to be taken care. Okay, so um, after the sprint planning and uh, after uh, all the scrum calls, uh, we um, uh, after the blueprint was provided by the user, everything was discussed and then uh, we um, um, set up an accounts payable module in the testing environment. And once it is done, uh, we showed the same to the um, user for, we gave the environment to the user for testing. And uh, once it is, um, test, once the testing uh, was done, then uh, a live environment uh, was shared. So, 
uh, you were saying, uh, so how many, uh, you were part of, uh, which phase of the project you were a part of it? Were you from the beginning or you were just part in certain, uh, certain steps you were only involved in the whole project? I was uh, there from the starting itself. However, my main uh, uh, work was to, um, uh, you know, uh, share the information with the user, understand, make the, uh, make, understand uh, the user, uh, sorry, uh, to make, understand the user, how to use the accounts payable module. That was my role. However, I was from the beginning, from uh, st uh, starting from the legal entities uh, till the um, year end closure. Okay, fine. Let me, uh, okay, so you said since you were in the beginning, let me just check your uh, technical uh, skills. Sure. Can you please tell me how do you create a legal entity in an organized, uh, like in the module? Yes. First, we will go to the uh, um, uh, modules. Navig in the na navigation pane, we will find modules. Under modules, we will find organization administration. Under organization administration, we will click organizations, legal entities. And in legal entities, we have to fill the mandatory, um, uh, we have to do the mandatory setups like uh, company code, uh, name, uh, region, uh, time zone, language. Uh, we have to set this. Uh, we have to set uh, uh, delivery address uh, we can set two address or more there is delivery address uh, business address we have to do a setup and the other setups if in case the user needs uh, otherwise these are the mandatory setups we will do it um, this is how the legal entities are set so to activate the legal entity what are the most steps that you need to take um, activate once yeah. we uh, once we uh, fill the name what are um, the mandatory I mean, what are the mandatory setups? Except filling the legal entity form, what are the mandatory setups that you do to activate the legal entity in the ledger? Okay, activate. Like, do you create number sequence and what are the other steps here? Yeah. Uh, once uh, we fill all the details, once we click save, the legal entity is saved, then we go to the uh, number sequence. We will generate a number sequence. There is two uh, number sequence uh, type, that is system and one is manual. So um, we can do a system uh, number sequence and uh, uh, um, we will go to same organizations, uh, modules, uh, organization administration uh, under that num uh, number sequence and we will uh, click generate uh, click next, next, and the number sequence will be generated. If we, are, if we do not want to modify anything, we can just click next, next, and the number sequence will be uh, will be uh, created for all the um, uh, ledgers. And then, um, then we will go to fiscal calendars. In the fiscal calendars, we will uh, fill the name, uh, uh, start date, end date, fiscal year, and uh, we will save the same. Uh, we will um, select the length as well, length period. Okay, uh, so the period can be months, days, uh, whatever, uh, as per the wish of the user. Then uh, after the fiscal calendar, we will go to uh, currencies. Uh, currencies, um, also same organization, administration and everything. Uh, we will come to currencies, all currencies, and uh, we will uh, fill the, um, uh, uh, if currencies are already set up in the currency list, However, if we want to uh, create our own currencies, so if we can click on new and uh, new, uh, give the currency name and click on save. However, the currencies are already set up for uh, each and every countries. Um, and then we will go to exchange rates, wherein we will fill the exchange rate um, types uh, name and then we will click on exchange rate uh, there uh, in the general uh, in the uh, tab. And then uh, from there, we will uh, give uh, from currency to currency, from currency and conversion factor, and then we can uh, add uh, the um, add the currencies from which date to which date we want to actually see the currencies. We can see uh, from that add line items. So this is how uh, we will create, and then um, after the exchange rates, huh, then it, then it comes to ledger, ledger and. Um, mm, Ledger chart of accounts. Uh, we will uh, create a chart of accounts. Uh, sorry, a little bit confusing. Journal. Uh, we will come to chart of accounts, and then uh, we will uh, create a uh, dimensions. Yes, dimensions. What about main accounts? That, yes, then uh, main accounts. Uh, sorry, 
it's a little after bit chart of account are you going to create main accounts uh, yes main accounts yes main accounts we will add assets liabilities um uh, whatever uh, the user has, we will uh, user information. We will mention the same, or you, we can export uh, the um, a file uh, from the uh, whatever the user uh, user gives of uh, Excel. Then we can uh, import the same through Dynamic uh, to the Dynamic 365, and then after main accounts, uh, yeah, dimension values has to be set up. Uh, dimension values and dimension set. Uh, has to be set up then uh, we have to go to the uh, account structure trial balance uh, we can um, select the financial dimensions in the trial balance and then we can go to the account structures uh, account structures then um, journals allocations that's it and what about assigning everything to the ledger do you do that yes we do that yeah how do you do that what what are the mandatory setup that you do in the ledger uh, not sure you add the Sorry. calendar start of account uh, do you create the account structure yes uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit confused. However, yes, we do assign the uh, ledger. So we do uh, uh, select the main account, uh, ch chart of accounts, uh, financial dimensions, everything in the ledger. Uh, Fine. Um, you have uh, worked in, you said you are best in accounts payable module, correct? Can you please tell me the P2P cycle? Uh, P2P cycle, yes. Uh, okay. First, we will go to navigation pane, modules, um, accounts payable, and uh, um, accounts payable, purchase order, all purchase order. And we will click new. Uh, we will fill all the vendor uh, details. And then we will add lines. And we will add product details. And uh, uh, then uh, once it is done, we will um, uh, sorry, uh, we will generate a product receipt. Um, without confirming the purchase order sorry. confirm the purchase order i'm sorry confirm the purchase or we will confirm the purchase order then we will generate the product uh, receipt and then uh, we will uh, post an invoice okay and then once the uh, invoice is posted uh, the uh, journal is posted in the vendor payment journal once the payment is oh. received Okay, so you are saying journal is posted. So can you please tell me which are the steps where financial impact uh, take place? Yes. Why are during the purchase? I'm sorry. Uh, financial transactions uh, take place uh, twice. Once uh, when the product receipt is generated and second when, the, uh, uh, when we create an invoice. Do you know what is two-way, three-way matching? Yes. Uh, two-way matching is when... Uh, a price information of the invoice is matched with the purchase order. That is two-way matching. And <coughs> sorry, three-way matching is when uh, uh, price information of the invoice is matched with the pu uh, purchase order and also a uh, quantity of the invoice, quantity mentioned uh, in the invoice is matched with the product receipt. Okay. Um... All right. Um, I think uh, my technical round, I'll stop here. Uh, uh, let's go to the feedback round. Sure, sure. Um, Sudeep, should I start first or you want to start first?